Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome to the broadcast. She's a two-time WWE Women's Champion, five-time Knockouts Women's Champion, Woman of the Year for PW Insider, and future Hall of Famer, Lisa Marie Varon, a.k.a. Victoria. <laughs> Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Gosh, welcome. yes. Thank you. Sorry about, like, my emails. I have three emails, and... uh it's spam. It's a lot of spam. I just had my friend, I go, could you just go through my emails and delete the spam and stuff like that? You know? So yeah, I can't do it on my own. Technology stinks. You know, it keeps growing every single day. You never know. <laughs> what you, you'll can't, get. you can't keep up with it. No. There's just so many apps, so many freaking, oh, just too much. It's too much. Yeah. I try to switch to um, galaxy phone, but um, cause they takes way better pictures. You know how social media, we post a lot of pictures, but I couldn't figure out the apps. I'm such an Apple user, but I have a PC at home, but um, I just can't, I can't learn it. It just like, it's, it's, I don't have patience. So there you have don't, it. Don't feel bad about that. I'm somewhere close to that myself. I get what works, you know, what calls in, what calls out. I only get the ones that, that, that I get a free upgrade. So I'm not one to go spend money on stuff, you know? I would like to get things started by talking about God TV, grown ass women. Talking nonsense. You do a show with SoCal Val and Mickey James. What inspired you ladies to create this show? And well, yeah. And how it like, is it evolving? It's almost going on three years. And um, it, it happened during COVID. Uh, Mickey was wanting to do this with Alicia Fox, but um, I think Alicia Fox was just not wanting to be in the spotlight anymore. Or I don't, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I don't know. But Mickey reached out to SoCal Val and then my name came up and they, they, um, we do Voxer, which is old school. That's a walkie talkie. And, um, they asked me, would you be a part of it? I go, heck yeah. So basically it just started us like, you know, being in our pajamas, drinking wine and just talking nonsense and seeing what everybody's, you know, what's everybody's up to, how we're handling the COVID and being, you know, locked in our homes and stuff like that. And then it evolved into having a lot of guests coming on and reaching out to us. Like, why haven't I been asked to be on the show? And we're like, wow, you know, you know, some of these people, cause you know, how it's hard to get guests, right? Yes. It's really hard. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to like go now. Oh, I think you're busy with other stuff going on. I didn't know you can fit it in your schedule. So you kind of don't want to be that, that friend that keeps on nagging and nagging and nagging. Would you be on our show? Would you be on our show? But right. it ended up people wanting to be on our show because it's little, you know, when you work with people, it's easy. We can talk about old stories instead of, you know, how you get started in the business, that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, is this something you want to be serious with? Like maybe you want to get a studio like Renee Briquette or just something you guys just want to do for fun from your homes? Uh, we, we do it for fun, but we would like it to be on a bigger platform and start making money at it. You know what I mean? Um, because it's 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 crazy like how to get subscribers and, you know, the algorithms and, you know, Val does the editing and it's just, it's a lot of work. It, it's, I think people think that the podcast or YouTube channels that you're done after the hour, but you're editing it and then you're splicing it. And then you have to add the intro and the music and all this and the plugging of the, the websites and like, what do you want to plug in? Let me put your website up. It's a lot of work. It's not just a, a nine to five kind of thing, you know? So kudos to you. Kudos to you. I would like to move on to your theme song. Well, one of your theme songs, but the one I'm talking about is the one people know you for the most. All the things she says by Tattoo. And even here in 2022, when they hear that song, they think about Victoria from back in the Rufus Aggression Attitude Era. How does it feel to still see fans associate you with that song? Despite the fact that Don't Mess With Me was made by Nicki Minaj. You know I ain't I mean? the lady to mess with. I know Nicki, I know, I got, I'm super lucky. All my entrance music, was fabulous. I had no complaints about it. And to have Tattoo, um, which I have mentioned on our show that um, I tried ordering the album and I have a neighbor that lives in my building. He's a DJ. Um, his name's Chris. And, you know, he goes back and forth to Palm Springs and it's, he's, he goes, oh, I have that album. And I go, can I buy that off of you? Because I'm trying to find it. And it's like $175 for the album. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't even have the album and I have the CD but um, that's easier to get, but it's phenomenal. Um, just had no idea about the song. Like at the beginning when Fit Finley came into the office, I said, can I bring Fit? Because Fit was such a big part of our women's division. And so we never did anything without him okaying it or his two cents, you know, cause he's so smart and stuff like that and brilliant. And I can't, we went in there and I go, it's not creepy enough. And so they added the, yes, I've lost my mind at the beginning. And um, 
yeah. And then when we did the video, I had no idea what it's going to turn out to be. Honestly, um, they're just, you know, it's, it's a show and it's, you, you're, you're a character and you're like, okay, do this. You're like, okay, open your hands, you know, keep on moving your hands. And I was like, I had no idea what's going to happen. So I was very pleasantly surprised. And I, I love that song. I really do. And I ended up buying the album and I liked their whole album, you know, and I got to meet one of the, the singers um, and when we had WWE, um, WWE New York or WWF New York, and she came and the other girl was, I think had flight issues or was ill and got to meet her. And it was awesome. I was, I'm very lucky that I had such great music. It was a controversial song for its time. Cause it involved two lesbians. Was that ever any issues with that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. They, they only owned it. Why we switched the song. They only bought the copyrights for a year. And so they had to change it. Uh -huh. And I was so bummed because that was such like part of my character. And when I saw the video, I go, wait a minute. Are they wanting me to be a lesbian character? That's what I automatically, and I pulled fit because, you know, he was our dad and we can tell anything too. And yeah. he was like, no, it's just, um, I think they reached out to WWE wanting the song to be used. And I was like, oh, okay. Am I that muscular that people like, you know, not, not, not all lesbians are, you know, tomboys and stuff like that there's feminine lesbians and stuff like that and i was i was like where where are we going with this but i went with it you know what I, you pick and choose your battles you know what i mean right. and yeah and i was pretty happy to be used you know what i mean and be active it was a great run for you and you had a ton of violent matches hardcore matches steel cage i think there was a hair versus hair match with you molly holly and i think you did a was it a street fight with you and trish at survivor series is there one in particular that stands out as your personal favorite? Oh my goodness. Um, I did like the Chicago street fight because I was living in Chicago at the time. The Chicago street fight was very special to me, but I had such, man, I had great opponents. And like, uh, we were trying to have like great matches, not for women, but for right, men, right. just having a great match period. And right. so every time I came to the um, TVs, you know, they don't call you and say, this is what you're doing this week. So you show up, you know, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning, and they're still in the meeting. And then the, the agents come out, you know, the producers, and they're, this is your match. And then we would always think Fit Finley's joking. And when I had the cage match with Lita, and I was like, shut up. And he goes, I'm, ser I'm serious. And I'm like, oh, my God, I, I'm not going to be walking in my future. Because, you know, those, those matches, although those are my fan base, that's their favorite match, the hardcore, you know. But for us, it's scary, dangerous, and you're hoping to get out without breaking something and not hurting your opponent because we're human and we make mistakes. You know, don't forget, this is not a movie where they go, okay, cut, do that scene again. You don't get a second chance. You have one chance to get it right. And when people go, oh, was that a botched spot? Which really ticks me off, to be honest with you, Alex. It's just, um, wow. I just, it, because we're human, we make mistakes. God forbid, like, you get out there, there might be a wet spot on the, the canvas that where you slip on, there's oil on the ropes and, you know, you're trying to show your face and get your hair out of your face so the camera can pick up facial expressions. And then you're also worried, I don't, I don't want to fall out of my outfit and um, I want the girl, you know, I was a heel, I want them to be chanting for the girl. My job is to get the fans to hate me. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a lot going through your mind. So it's like myself and people are shocked to hear this. Even when I did indies after I retired, like was done with the big companies, I would still puke out of nervousness. Yeah. I was so nervous because it's just when you are in the business for a, a long time, you're like, I just, I hope you don't disappoint a fan. I hope they don't think, you know, oh gosh, she used to be so jacked. I have gray hair, like, you know, I have wrinkles now, you know, you just, there's a lot going through your head that you want people to walk away going, wow, you want them to go, why did she retire? That's what you want. You don't want them to go, oh no, she should have hung up her boots a long time ago. Oh, this poor thing. Wow. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of pressure. That's why it's a lot of nerve. It's, it's nerve wracking. Well, follow up question. So how do you handle those nerves? Because you were on TV for years in front of millions of people. So what is something that you do to mentally prepare when you're going uh, on TV? So I would kind of stay away from my opponent unless like I'd run back and going, hey, are we going to do this? Okay, well, they'll just, you know, and I would be, they were like, okay, get away. You're making me nervous. And I would make people nervous, even the rookies. And I was like, no, I got it. I got it. I had to act really confident, but I would say a prayer three times. 
um, facing the the curtain and just hovering, hovering. But once my music started, like you would see me in the gorilla position, I'd go, okay, hey, just in case, I might do this. And then my music would go, boom, and I'd go. And I became that freaking bully in high school or in elementary school, and I became a killer. Once I heard my music, I'm not Lisa anymore. I, I become what the fans want me to become. It's like you a know? switch. So, just it's back. a switch, and which yeah. is scary because, wow, <laughs> I am kind of crazy. Then I start going, oh, my God. They're like, did you just, you scare me. And, you know, Melina has this too. Um, I had my retirement match, and I decided last minute at Masters of Entertainment um, I was just so nervous and I was puking and get in the ring and fate encircling Melina. She turns into that evil character too. Right. And I'm like, I, we locked up. I go, girl, you're dude, you're scaring the hell out of me. But she turns into that evil and you're just like, oh my God, she's going to kill me. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But after we pin, I love you. You know what I mean? <laughs> the sweetness comes out. You know what I mean? But at the moment you turn on, you know, you're just like, it's yeah. kind of like when basketball players say, leave it on the court. You don't take it personally. It's all business. You both love what you do. So, of course, you're going to put your all into it. Yes. I, I think that is so cool, by the way. Um, it's it's great that you can do something that you love. You know what I mean? I just mm -hmm. wish that in our generation we got paid a little bit more so we can have retirement fun. But, you know, like I say, you know, I'm a hustler. My, my entrance song should be every day I'm hustling because hustling. I'm like, I'm pimping out my store. We're yeah. doing, you know, cameo chit chats, this and that, you know, and I think people think that we're rolling in the dough, like after the, you know, the show, you know, it's like, it's not like you get a lot of money when you, when you're done, you're an independent contractor, you're done, you're done, yeah. you know, but you know, God bless the girls that are making a lot of money now. They deserve it because they're doing the diva, um, the what is I was going to say diva search. Oh my gosh. The, the diva shows and they're doing the reality and they they don't have a day off. They don't have a day off. And like, at least we had two and a half days to recover. They're just going back to go film some more. That row schedule must be hell. But if you love yes, it, then I'm complaining. I had a great career, but yeah. to go back now, like to think about, would I be able to do that when I'm riding, <laughs> riding my electric bike to the post office, which is five blocks away. And I come back, I'm like, whew, I had a long day today. I went to the post office. <laughs> oh no. I know. But that code this COVID thing ruined me because it's just like uh I became so lazy and got accustomed to being home and with my dogs and just watching my Netflix, watching my stranger things and all my shows that I'm addicted to. But I still have to work, you know. I want to talk about your finisher, Widow's Peak. How did it come about? How did you develop the move? And who is your personal favorite that took it? Oh, who sold it the best? Yeah. Oh my God, that's, that's, okay. Okay, Molly Holly went to an independent show mm -hmm. and she came back and she said, Victoria, we called each other by our characters. We never call each other by our real name. So I think it's odd, like when someone goes, oh, I just met Mark. And I go, who's Mark? And the Undertaker, I go, oh, I would <laughs> never, I would never call him Mark. Only as a joke, I would do that. But I was like, oh. I don't know people's, you know, we just call each other by our characters, right? right. And um, she came back, Victoria, I got a move for you. I went to an independent con um, show and saw this guy, Roderick Strong, do this move. And I was the bigger girl of the clan um, of, our, of our show, and I could pick up everybody. So I was the muscle, I was the base, you know, the cheerleading base, um, catching everybody. And she taught me. We did it on the outside of the ring. Um, she took it, and everybody went, oh! <gasps> Cause we would always get into the ring early to go over, you know, new repertoire and work on new moves and, and like try to work on, you know, even though you're in the business for a long time, you never stop learning. You always have to work on your craft, you know, and Vince saw it and it, she, she got up, she goes, do you like that move for Victoria? He goes, are you okay? Yeah. And I got that move. The first person to take it was Stacy Keebler and she took it like a champ, but I think Molly Holly, um, gosh, there's so many people that took it so great. Mickey James and um, mm -hmm. even Tori Wilson and like and uh, the one that really made you go, Oof, is she okay? Christy Hemi. She was in the bikini, and if you go back, her back she she has lordosis, which is the spine that goes, you know, her back goes, you know, sticks out like this. So it's she's like that. So she's very flexible. And she took it and it looked like an accordion. She bent so far back. Um, we had her on our show. 
And um, I go, I still feel bad to that for that. She goes, why? I was okay. And I go, I thought you told me later that your back hurt. She goes, well, just from the bumping and like just normal wrestling. And I was like, oh, God, thank God. I really thought I walked away going, are you okay? Because people still replay it. And I think that's when I turned back to bad guy with Jerry Lawler hitting in, in the bolitas. So, <laughs> yeah, but she took it where it looked. I don't think she's okay, but she was okay. But um, I never took my move. I don't know what it feels like. I think it's one of the only finishers where people have gone a complete career with no one kicking out of it. Okay. Um, I think one time Lita did and, you know, it was Lita and um, I got yelled at backstage. Um, and I was oh. like, well, if anybody's going to kick, they're like, you never have anybody kick out of your finisher without help or putting their foot, foot on the ropes or something. I don't know where what match it was. I'll be honest with you. Maybe it was before the cage match but I got a lot of heat backstage. You never have anybody kick out of your finish. That's what makes you, 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 because that's supposed to be the exclamation point on the, on the match. And I was like, I just wanted to be appeasing and please everybody and, you know, be giving in the ring, which is a double-edged sword. I, I was very, very much of a giver in the ring where it was, um, what moves do you want to get in? Okay. I got you. Let's do it. If the time gets cut, we might not get to it, but I'm not going to make you look bad, you know? So that's cool. Yeah, you're only good as your own, your your opponent, you know. So it's always yeah. nice to have matches with your best friends because they know that you don't mean to really hurt them or, you know, the punches. Like I would actually accidentally maybe get them a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, you don't mean to do it, but and they know it. So apologies are after before the match and after the match. The show must go on. I want to talk about your psycho character now. So if I'm not mistaken, the ones I know about are you, Mickey James, and AJ Lee. And all you were different in your own way. What was the inspiration behind your character? Like, take us into the mind of Victoria. Okay, well, when people came out to try out, um, they would not just have dark matches. Like, they would say, hey, I want to see you two in the ring to independent guys. Mm -hmm. And um, I wasn't independent, but I got in there and I was grappling. They're like, wow, you really wrestle very um, psychotically. And I go... I was taught Memphis style, which is very exaggerated because you want the last row. You know, we're not televised all the time. You want the last row to see what you're doing. So I was always, you can tell what my next move is because I was so, ex I had to kind of tone it down a little bit. Yeah. But um, that's how I got the more in psycho. In, and I thought I was just being intense. Mm -hmm. And um, when they gave me that, um, I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I can really push this character to the max. And they can just tell me, let's pull it back. You're doing too much. You want them to tell you, pull it back instead of you're not doing enough. Wow. When you're not doing enough, you're not going to be making it. You know what I mean? So I just was, you know, and thank God for Stevie Richards. I guess we both were known as crazies. He was so giving. He's our next guest. Um, I know this is pre-taped, but it was um, Wednesday. Yeah. So Stevie Richards is on there. And without... Without him, Victoria would have been nothing. And without Roderick Strong's finisher and out, um, without giving people like Molly Holly, Trish, Lita, Jackie Moore, Jazz, Jazz teaching me so much in the um, developmental territory, I would not be who I am. I mean, honestly, it's you have that really good chemistry with your good, good friends that are super giving and are there to have a good match, not to make themselves look like a superstar, but to have the match look like a superstar match. There's so much that goes into these TV characters a lot. And I know this Mickey James is very different. Was there ever a discussion that you two would ever be a tag team? Because I was always thinking like, oh, these guys would be cool as like a psycho female tag team. I'm sure we, we pitched it though, Alex. I think we pitched it a couple of times, but you know, it's a hit or miss. A lot of, they're getting bombarded by storylines. Hey, just to get relevant on the show, you know, you come, you go home and you're like, what else can I do? And um, the thing is, like, um, I'm glad that Mickey and I weren't really much of a tag team because we're be better opponents, um, mm -hmm. I think, because we we, sh we make each other shine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, I would be curious what that would have entailed. But, um, like, for example, like you said, what, what goes in the mind of the Victoria mindset? I was like, okay, how crazy can I make this character? How crazy I can go? Um, and I remember I was supposed to go out and I – took Stevie and I was only supposed to smell him, but I licked his face and I bit his ear. And I remember going backstage and I go, so sorry for that. I go, I got in the moment. And he goes, no, just go with it. We never went over anything backstage. It was all organic. How can we make each other look super crazy and just that dy dynamic duo, 
you know what I mean? So yeah. 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 It was, it was nuts. Like I just turned into that, that kid that you didn't like at school that would bully the weaker yeah. students. You know what I mean? So you just go, God, what person did I hate? Like, or what scary movie did I watch that I hated that crazy character, you know? Some of the best moments are like that. I remember Ric Flair talking about his match with Shawn Michaels in WrestleMania 24, and you get the iconic, I'm sorry, I love you. I think he said that was not scripted. That was all organic. I loved it. <laughs> oh my God, I was backstage. And when we're backstage, we're not just, you know, we're all sitting in front of the monitors. We're not watching it live unless you can find a good spot where fans are not going to be distracted by you looking through the curtain because you don't want to be a distraction to the match, like the big, bigger names, right? Yeah. And we were, it's, it's a sold out seat um, backstage in front of the monitor. And we're like, oh my God, that's awesome. He's one of my favorites, yeah. Top 10 grades of all time, for sure. You know what I Him mean? and Ricky Steamboat, that's, that's who I studied in, in wrestling school. Um, I, the psychology, how they can have an hour match and have the fans still standing on the feet, where today's day, to get a pop from the fans, Alex, they're doing so much on the show okay. that you're like, okay, what do I have to do? I am seventh match. Holy crap. How am I going to get a pop when they're doing suicide dives on the first match? So it's hard to like, be creative at that moment, you know? That does lead into this next question about the modern day female wrestling. Because women's wrestling has come so long from the days of the eye candy, the bra and panties. We're now seeing people like Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, main eventing WrestleManias, which is huge. Huge. How's that feel? How's that feel? I mean, I'm, I'm so women? excited. I feel I like a proud mom or grandma that that I'm like, oh my God, look how great the girls are. They're finally getting that moment. And I'm very proud, not jealous. I was part of the industry and I always have to thank the people before me um, that paved the way for us to do what we did. And they're incredible. And um, I'll be honest with you, when people ask me if you can go back, would you go back? I go, I would have to really think about it and get into really good ring shape, really good ring shape because their cardio, their agility and their freaking the, how how much they stepped up, you know, not working where I would tell the camera guy, hey, I'm going to hit this move, zoom in on my face. I'm going to create a moment right there. I'm more, I'm going to stalk my prey and just, ooh, you know, maybe a couple moves and get my face. I'm going to tell a story and show how mean I am. It, it's a little different. Um, after my Rumble appearance, I was, I, I think I went backstage and I dry heaved because I was so blown up, so out of breath. Um, they called me two weeks prior to that to get ready. You can't get in the ready for the ring, especially during COVID, not working out at a normal gym um, or in the ring. I didn't have gear, um, didn't have my red hair extensions, didn't have Botox, didn't have fake nails. And I was scared to go back to disappoint. But when I went, I was like, I went to Gorilla and I'm like, oh, you guys. You need to call me to way longer than two weeks to get ready for these girls. They kicked my ass. Oh my gosh. They were, they were amazing. Amazing. And I was just like, I'm not used to working so fast. I'm more, a little bit slow and kind of like get that moment. Like, let me show you my face, zoom in my mid face. But I was like, Oh, they're all bumping and feeding for me. I don't know what to do. It was incredible though. Um, a lot of tears, a lot of puking. I couldn't eat. Tori brought me fruit. Um, Mickey had to keep on um, bringing me to the side. Um, God, Bailey and um, oh my gosh, just amazing girls coming up to me going, you got this, you're Victoria. And I was like, I'm just so nervous. I'm just so, I just don't want to disappoint anybody. And the nerves got to my stomach. I was just like, it was in knots. It was like studying for a final in, in college or high school that I, did I prepare enough for this? Yes, no, I stayed no. up till 4.30 in the morning. Am I, am, I, am I ready? You know, you kind of second. And then when you're done and you're just going, I hope people liked it. I hope people liked it. You know, I liked yeah. it. I loved your return. I, at the loved, it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. You got, you have no idea when they were, we went to rehearsals to find out what number and then who the wrestlers are going to be in the match while we're in there. When they said, okay, Victoria, number 10 girls, let her get all her, her shit in, you know, excuse my language. They let her get her shit in. Um, you know, people have been waiting for her to come and make a comeback. You know, you guys just give her yourself. And I start crying again. I'm very emotional. Um, for people that think that I'm such a hard ass and badass in the ring, 
I'm one of the mo most sensitive people that you can ever meet. I'm very, very, you know, I cry like on anything, movies, just, I'm just, I'm a sap. I'm a sap. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, you I know, know what to do, you know? Yes. Me you no, care. I, I need to ask this though, since you told me you would consider it if you were in shape, let's just say you were in shape and you could do it. Who's one female wrestler that you would actually like to wrestle today? Okay, because I met Bailey twice when she was a little girl in line as an 11 year old and a 14 year old saying, I'm gonna be a diva. You know how many times we hear that from fans? And you're just like, oh, they have no idea how hard it is to get in the business, right? Mm -hmm. um, and how you sacrifice and you're away from the family and they think it's a piece of cake. She was such a big fan of mine. And she was like, she actually um, texted me the other day, hey, do you mind if I take your spinning sidewalk slam? And I go, the spider web. And I go, I'd be honored. I'd be so honored. I go, I told you, I'm, I'm shocked that no one's taken that move. And I go, please take it. I go, my gosh. I go, I wouldn't be offended if anybody took the widow's peak. I, I don't, I, honestly, I'm, I'm not in the business anymore. Um, it's, it's an homage to me because they watched me. Um, but Bailey is one that just is just so kind and and giving um but bianca too and um riley riley freaking a man that girl is freaking invincible too you know just like there's such good talent out there and of course there's so many good girls out there there's now it's too much to pick from because everybody is at that level where they're freaking good and to be noticed by wwe aew nwa tna impact wrestling you got to be the top of the game. It's not where your looks are going to get you by anymore. You got to you you got to walk the walk and talk the talk now. Um, this next question comes from a fan, and he wants to talk about your run in TNA, where you were working with an actual tarantula. It's kind of like when Jake the Snake Roberts was working with actual snakes. That's what I felt like. Yeah. That's, that's why I thought it was cool. I'm so Jake the Snake right now. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, they knew me as the Spider Girl, Black Widow in WWE, and when I went to the show on my first day. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're, are you Tara? And realize it's short for tarantula, right? And so, um, um, which wasn't part of the deal. I wanted my real name because it makes me start all over, you know, like who the hell is this girl, Tara? They could have spelt Vic Tara, you know, or something like that. Right. But um, I go there, the guy from Gatorland, they were not my spiders. They came from Gatorland. So on Universal Studios, the rule is if you have an animal, there has to be a specialist there. And so he goes, oh, are you Tara? And I go, oh yeah, my new name. Okay, yeah. Um, they're like, these are for you. And I go, what are these? And I open it and I go, what the hell is this? And she goes, well, you're a spider girl. And I go, I was a black wit. I was black widow tarantulas. And I go, okay, what do I do? And they're like, after you give the finishing move, you have to place it on their body, which they didn't go over it with the other girls. The girls, some girls wouldn't do it. I, they have to be on their stomach and I could put it on their back so they can't feel it. Right. And, um, I asked, I go, well, what happens if I get bit? And they're like, have you ever been stung by a bee? And I go, no. And I go, okay, so there's no venom in these spiders. Oh, no, there's venom. And I go, what the hell? So I go back. This is, thank God Google was around. I had to go research tarantulas. And, of course, I talked a big game going to TNA, took a huge pay cut to go there. And I just told him, I go, I guarantee um, I'm doing a year because I want to prove to you guys that you give me a match, I'm going to be the best I can do. I'm going to give 100%. I don't know if you watch um, Key and Pill. I do. Yeah. Okay, so he, I, I got give a hundred and ten percent. I give a hundred and ten percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my shows. That's what I play during the day. And um for background noise, because it makes me laugh. But um, okay, so uh I did the spiders, and you can see the first show, you can see my hand shake because I don't know what the hell to do. And I didn't know their body language, and they shoot their fibers from their body to blind birds that hunt them for food. Yeah. to the corneas right and they would blind them so they can like oh get away and every time i'm after a match i'm blown up i'm out of breath so i'm going <gasps> on the spider and it would go like this you know like <laughs> and I'm, I, every time i would tell the ref it's gonna bite me he goes what are you gonna do and i go no sell it i'm not gonna i'm gonna take the bite i can't i gotta do this i gotta do this never got bit but everybody thought it was my spider um his name was her name or his name was Poison. Yeah. Um, beautiful tarantulas. Um, beautiful. They're gigantic. Gi man. And they were like, are you afraid of spiders? I'm like, I don't like cockroaches mm. um, and mosquitoes. Um, I go, I don't know if I'm afraid. I, I'll be honest with you. But when I, I never kill a spider, I always put it outside. 
Right. God, how mean my character is. I won't even kill a spider. Yeah. So I went with it and I felt like Jake the Snake and I felt like, you know, it's cool that a chick is doing this, that is holding, a, and I felt like Jake the Snake, you know, and um, every, I was like, which, which spider did I have last time? He goes, I don't know. I just, I just, you told me to bring the bigger ones, the big ones. And I was like, okay, who, which one's temper, like, which one is okay? Like, because they're around people all the time at Gatorland. Mm -hmm. So they're on people. So they're used to people, but you don't know if you're going to piss them off, you know? And, and they have like a grip. They use their claws to grip. They wanted me to put it on my, my cheap plug. Hold on. Yeah. Here we go. Uh huh. There you go. Are you waiting for this? Here we go. What is this about? Okay. This is not the TNA belt, but it's my, a fan made me this, by the way. Hey. Okay, they want me to put the spider on the title, but they use grip. They use, sorry, they use their fibers and their, their claws to grip. And this is no gripping position. So I go, oh my God. And so when I researched the, the, the spider, I was like, great. They, when you drop them, they explode like a light bulb. And I go, oh no, PETA is going to be after me. Oh no, I'm going to kill a spider. And I was like, and I kept on going, when I'm supposed to look like I'm so excited, I'm going, the spider is going to slip off and it's going to get in the ring and just like, it's going to explode. And I was, it was every night was like, oh no, please God, please don't get bit by the spider. Like I have a match to, to, to yeah. worry about and not hurting each other and getting, executing everything right. And now at the end, you're like, great. Now it's the spider moment. Yeah. Oh no, it's not over. I just want to go backstage and take off my gear and just crack open a wine or, or a beer. And yeah. Oh, oy vey. That's all I got to yeah. say. How do you feel about AEW's women's division? Do you watch any AEW content or? I, I catch it here and there yeah. via social media. There is so much wrestling out there. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, SoCal Val, Tracy Brooks, myself, are on Fight TV, and we are guest announcers for um, Impact Wrestling pay per views. Okay, and that's you know that's three that's over three hours, right? And then Raw, and then SmackDown, and AEW, and NWA. Oh man, there's a lot of wrestling. I cannot keep up with everything, but AEW is fabulous. I talk to Tracy Brooks about it all the time. Kazarian, you know her husband Frankie is on there, yeah. and they really do take care of the talent, you know, with insurance and and good pay, and so. It's finally happening, people, where, you, where they're appreciating the talent and, you know, Tony Khan's taking care of their talent. But, um, you know, it's nice to see that there's plenty of platforms, Alex, It's um, yeah, uh, because it gives people more jobs and they get seen and they don't have to do, you know, the $20 a match place. You, you know what I mean? It's just, it's nice to see that there's other platforms. So I'm not saying that WWE is the place to be. I think all the platforms are doing amazing work and I'm so proud. It's expanding. For real, for real. Yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> for real! <laughs> Speaking of expanding, biggest news story in 2022, Stephanie McMahon has taken over WWE as the co-chairwoman, Triple H in charge of creative, new regime in WWE. When you heard this, what was your reaction to all this news? I, girl power and women empowerment. I was, um, you know, she's always been... Um, an advocate for the, the diva matches, the women's matches. And um, I think it's amazing. I love her. I, I always got along with her. Um, she's freaking drop dead gorgeous. Good God, that girl age just doesn't, there's no such thing in that family. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then Paul um, triple H, which I never call him Paul, which that was kind of weird coming out of my mouth. I don't know why, um, but I saw something, a headline that he's bringing back old talent yes. and which that's listening to the fans, man. They're listening to the fans and giving them what they want, you know? So I couldn't be, you know, I had a great career. I'm, honestly, yeah. I, I have nothing to complain about at all. I, I, you know, I was handing, handed my career on a silver platter, not knowing anything about wrestling and then just training my ass off and trying to be the best, you know? And um, I, I'm excited to see the future, what's going to happen. We all are. We all are. <laughs> we have the future. And I do want to wrap this up with this final question. I know you get it all the time, but I got to ask it again. Will we see Victoria potentially into the Hall of Fame? Okay. Well, you know, I get that. And it means a lot coming to, from the fans. Like, you know, I do a lot of Comic Cons because you know I'm a, a nerd inside and a geek at heart. And um, I get that question. It's, it's not my decision. It's really not my decision. Of course, I'd be honored, completely honored. 
Um, but you know, it's not like, Oh, I go, why am I not in the hall of fame? I wouldn't never do that. Right. But, uh, you know, but that's a question for WWE, not for myself, you know, but it means yeah. a lot coming from the fans Yeah. because they appreciate my work. You know what I mean? And um, I still have passion for the business. It's part of my life. And just you, it's um, like SoCal Val says, it's like Hotel California. You can check in, but you never can check out. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that true? You yeah. think you're done, but you're still always going to be part of it. It's mm. going to be part of your future forever, which I'm happy. I'm happy. Do you still get the bug once in a while? Like, oh man, I wish I can just go back one more time. Or are you just content? Like actually just being fully retired. It has to be like presented to me. Um, what's the storyline? Like um, which opponent am I going to be facing? Um, there's such a lot to consider. How much time do I have to get ready? Because that would be make or break for me. Uh, we want you to come back in a week. Uh, I, I, the fans are going to crap on me. I can't get ready in a week for a match. Not with the caliber of girls they have now. I would need some time to prepare, but you never say never, right? Look at Ric Flair, you know, Nick Dinsmore, um, Eugene, you know, like and Mickey James, you know, it, it's, it's a bad word to say the R word is bad retiring because you never know. It's, it's, it's almost like, I better not say this because I'm, gonna, I'm, I know it's going to bite me in the butt. I thought you retired, you know, even Stone Cold Steve Austin came back at WrestleMania. So if he can come back, who knows what happened with Victoria? You never know, right? You never know. You never know. I hopefully by the time they call, I'm not in a walker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Man, you're going to live forever. I love you. I love you. This was so fun. This was thank so fun. Thank you so much. For being and thank you for being patient because I wish I could screen cap my emails. Uh, I get five podcast requests a day and I'm like, my mind, I go, oh, oh this is, I still have to go to the post office. Um. I have my, my big cartel store to plug in. I got my cameos. I got God TV. We have to get our next guest. So it gets me a little bit anxiety. Yeah. And then going on comic cons and I have wrestle bash coming up. Like my day is not just eating bonbons sitting on my ass at home. You know what I mean? I miss those days by the way, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, me too. I, I wish I ever had that. I'm always, um, Oh no laundry. Oh God. I got to steam clean the carpets. Oh, I got to wax the floors. Like it's, it's an ongoing thing. Um, I don't have a maid. So yeah. Welcome to real life. Adulting sucks. <laughs> Before we go, would you like to plug your stuff, your Instagrams, your social medias, where they can find you at? Uh, you know what? I'll let you plug it in. Um, I'm just okay. happy and very honored to be part of your show. And thank you for reaching out and um, having fans ask questions. And it's, it's, I'm going to cry. God Damn it. Yeah, it's just like, it's just nice to be remembered. It's very humbling, mm -hmm. you know, to have like fans still like love your work and realize the passion you have for it. And I love my fans. I, I do. Um, Mickey just said um, last week on our show, like, you know, um, I never realized my, my worth and I'm very, I always have a long line because I talk to every fan for so long. I just want them to go leave with a good experience instead of being in line, get an autograph. Okay, next, next, next. You know what I mean? But it's very, I'm very, I appreciate all the loyalty, all the love I get from the fans and just, you can plug my social media. You know, I, everybody knows my big cartel store. So, you know, I'm selling, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of my storage. I'm paying 167 a month which is outrageous for what the hell, right? Right. Oh. So I'm selling my clothes out of my closet. Not my, just my ring gear, oh my just God. my clothes, just to, you know, make ends mean me just like, uh, you know, paying bills, trying to live up to, you know, California is expensive, you guys. So, but thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show. Check out her social medias down below in the description. Leave a comment, leave a like, do all the YouTube things. Thank you so much for being here, Victoria and oh. guys. Be sure you check out more wrestling interviews. Hey, we might see some friends of Victoria on here. Maybe a Mickey James, maybe a Soka. I've Hall. already talked to them about you. Oh, really? We'll see how this, this, we'll see how this one goes. <laughs> okay. And don't forget, Alex, to send me all the links so I can make sure I'm following and all that kind of stuff too. And right. I'm very proud of you. Very proud of you. And thank you for being so um, like positive about the wrestling industry and not talking so negatively you know, a lot of stuff is going on and just like, you know, it, remember, we still love the business. We still love wrestling. Wrestling is life. Man, 
That was a crazy interview. How's about you show some love to Victoria down below in the comments? Let me know how you feel about what she said. Are there other questions you would like her to answer? Because maybe she'll watch the video and leave a comment. You just never know. Regardless, I do appreciate you for taking the time to watch this interview. Please follow Victoria on all social medias and show her some love and tell her who sent you. Other than that, thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe, click that bell for future content, do all the YouTube things, and I'll catch you guys next time right here in Alex's world, a safe space for wrestling fans like you.